welcome to third Sunday Tea Talk Show. I'm your host, Dr. Akita Pearson, and it is my pleasure to bring you another inspiring and amazing show on this month of May. We are so glad that you all had an opportunity uh, last month. We weren't here, but you still went to the website. You saw previous show shows. We also uh, would like to thank our sponsors for being so faithful for our show. Shout out to our sponsor, T by Julia Fay. She was the one who helped me start it all, Third Sunday Tea. So I shout out to Julia Fay, T by Julia Fay. That's Julia Fay Briggs, as well as some other great individual sponsors. Reverend Dr. Andrea King of the United Methodist Church, Camille Warren, who's down in Tennessee. Those are some of our major sponsors. Some of our other sponsors include Lincoln Heritage Life Insurance Company, and of course, uh, Carolyn Lassane's Travel Agency. And the name of that is Moments, Defining Moments Travel is the name of her travel company. She is not with us on today, but we are so very grateful for her always having an encouraging word for our defining moment. So welcome to the show and thanks again. Today we are going to have our featured guests who are the Richards. They are running a little behind time. If you know anything about 95, 95 you can get stuck. And so today the volume is extremely high on 95 and they're running just a little bit behind time, but they will be here. And that is the Richards Group Foundation. Uh, the Richards Group Foundation was founded by Stan and Sharice Richards. They are um, individuals who have a heart for the people. And I'm not going to get into telling their story, but you'll get to hear from them very, very soon. So as we um, prepare for this uh, month of May, all of the exciting events coming into the summer season, which is June the 24th, First, although in Maryland we've been feeling the heat with 80 degree weather for the past um, two days, we want to and we would like to continue to encourage everyone to support all of the events that are coming up, especially with our nonprofit organizations. There are several nonprofit organizations who do not have the platform to have an opportunity to share their offerings or be on TV or to have big sponsorships. But that's what we do here at Third Sunday's Tea Talk Show. We educate, advocate, and we celebrate. And we are always celebrating here and celebrating our nonprofits. One of the nonprofits that you have seen here in the past is um, Community Ministries of Prince George's County and the CEO of that particular nonprofit is Mr. Jimmy Slade. That nonprofit has been around for 42 years. Another nonprofit is Muslim Alanisa. That is in Baltimore, Maryland, and that particular nonprofit has been around for many, many, many years and ran by my dear sister, Chaplain Ozma Hanif. And that particular nonprofit focus is providing shelter, especially for Muslim women who are abused. We know that there are several individuals who are abused in our country. There are several in individuals who come from other countries and do not have safe havens here. And there's not enough resources um, that are available to help with a lot of the women, children, and men that are in need. Another nonprofit that is dear to my heart is Seeds of Security. And Seeds of Security was started about a year ago with Bishop Easterlin of the United Methodist Church. And her vision is to provide housing for abused women and children in the state of Maryland. And currently what they do is provide emergency services for individuals who are in those kinds of crises. So welcome again to the show. This is Third Sunday Tea Talk show, and we are so very glad that you joined us here today. We're gonna to take a brief commercial break, and we're gonna come right back here. So hold tight.
Android users. The VoxWave app is now available in the Google Play Store. Download the app today on your Android device to listen in and view programs. Superstar, come show your talents at the Live Mic Showcase. Register with Stan Kelly at M4Recording at gmail.com and perform live at the Voxwave Studio located inside Star Imports Dealership right next to Red Lobster at 4711 Off Place in Suitland, Maryland. It's the Live Mic Showcase featuring this area's hottest unsigned talent. It's happening Fridays at 10 p.m. Stream us live at Voxwave.com or come party with us in person. Fellas, $10 at the door. Ladies free on the guest list before 12. That's 4711 Off Place, Suitland, Maryland. And online at VoxWave.com. It's the Live Mic Showcase. Don't miss it. Welcome back to Third Sunday Tea Talk Show. We are so glad that you are joining us here in the month of May. And you see me without my co-host, who is not going to physically be here with us today, but she will call in. She will not miss this opportunity to enlighten us and to encourage us. So she will be calling in very shortly to talk about our defining moments. And while we're still waiting for our guests, Stan and Sharice Richards, to join us for the show, we are going to open up our um, phone lines. We're going to open up our phone lines for callers to give shout outs to your family, to your friends. In this um, month of May, I was blessed to be in a service earlier today, a family and friends service. And I am so grateful that there were several family and friends that came to join us over at St. James um, Memorial UMC Church in Baltimore. Shout out to my uncle, Reverend Amos Burgess, Vonda Burgess. Shout out to um, Mr. William Battle who joined me. Also Belinda, as well as my dear sister Carole Campbell. Kudos to all of you as well as Sharon Fallon, one of my dear friends from many, many years ago, shared in worship services uh, with me on uh, today. So that's the first shout out. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm blessed of you. I am blessed of the Lord too. I was just telling our viewers that you were not physically here with us, but you were gonna be calling into the show so thank you so much for joining us. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory, everybody. Um, I'm trying to log in to look at it, and it's not coming up. Voxwave.com? Yeah. Um, I'll go to the... Yeah, uh, go to YouTube and then do Voxwave. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll do that. Yes. Go that way. So for the viewing, uh, for those of you who may be um, just listening, um, if you're trying to log in, go to VoxWave. Go to YouTube and then VoxWave. Right. Yeah, because it's showing the VoxWave. It's showing, it's showing something else. Okay. That's all right. Technology is so good. We need it. We need the technology. And sometimes we have little technical problems, but it's all good. Amen. Amen. But it's, it's already all right. And, and now I see, now it's 
see you. Okay. <laughs> and so now I'm going to turn it down so I don't have a double seat. Hi, cousin. Hello there. <laughs> so glad to so glad for technology. We uh, we love it, and at times, you know, it it seems not to be our best friend. But we exactly. still have our full show, even though you don't see uh, Evangelist Carolyn on the set with me. She is still with us. Amen, amen. To God be the glory. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I apologize that I cannot be there physically today. Um, we have an afternoon service, and I was under directive from the Lord that I needed to make sure that I was present and accounted for in my home church um, this afternoon. So, and um, because the church is in Baltimore, it will be literally impossible for me to be down um, in the studio until 4 and then to get back to Baltimore at four, 4 o'clock service. It's just I, I couldn't even do it. I need to be able to do like a genie. I dream a genie thing, and we know that ain't the case. So uh, my cousin graciously allowed me to uh, just call in. We were going to try to do the Facebook Live thing so that you all could see me and all of that kind of stuff. But God is good. We here, and to God be the glory. It, t it takes nothing away from what God is doing with uh, this ministry because it is a ministry. Absolutely. We praise God. We praise God for what He's doing what he's doing. Amen. 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 Well, I was sharing in reference to um, family and friends um, being this Sunday for my church and several other churches and just the yeah. blessing of having family and friends in your life and what that constitute. And when we look back at the history of, um, of family, it goes all the way back to the covenant. Um, right. And those of us who are of the Christian um, faith and even of some of the other faiths, um, the covenant is something that is very sacred and something that is for a lifetime. Amen. So family, we are supposed to be our brothers and our sisters keepers. Amen. We are supposed to be in fellowship um, as if in kinship with one another, with our friends. And Amen. so it is truly an opportunity to rejoice to have family and to have friends. That may not be everyone's story, but it is important for us to remember the covenant of family and friends and, and what that constitutes. Um, sometimes uh, families kind of split when children get older, um, but that's not what's supposed to happen. Covenant Amen. is for a life time covenant is for a lifetime um i know sometimes people look at um covenants and contracts and think that they are synonymous and they are not um even though we when individuals get married they sign a marriage contract however what's more sacred in a marriage is the covenant because Amen. the covenant is the thing that is supposed to last forever. That's what God intended. And we Amen. know that a contract is for a certain period of time. It ends when it ends. It can, so it when we're looking um, at family and friends and what it means to us, that is a lifetime venture. Um, and we may not be, we may not can be physically with our family and friends on a daily basis, but to know that that love still radiates when you are not in their presence and knowing that if you are in need, you can pick up the phone or you can email or you can text and someone is there to assist. Amen. There was um, a young lady that spoke to me um, and she's, well, she's not, well, she's young at heart, put it that way. She's in her 80s. And, um, and I just have a love for wisdom. And the love for wisdom is um, being in the company of people who are wise. Um, and just because a person has the age doesn't necessarily mean they're wise. But there are many, <laughs> there are many individuals who have age and who also have wisdom. And um, she was so excited when um, her granddaughter called 
to tell her that her grandson, uh, he was not interested in the prom and he waited till the last minute and she wasn't prepared financially. And she says she was so happy. She says, because you don't have to worry, I got you. Amen. And that's what families, families come through when we need it the most. I know you Amen. can talk about that all day long. You, you know I can. You know I can. I've actually been um, talking about family uh, just over this weekend. Um, I shared on Friday I had to go to the hospital. I had to have a little little um, minor procedure done, and they, you know, put you under the anesthesia and all that, so I couldn't drive myself home. I was in and out within a few mm -hmm. hours. Thank you, Jesus. And um, just grateful, my oldest sister, Sarah, who is just a rock for me. Both of both of my sisters, my oldest sisters, are just rocks for me. Um, my mom, our mom passed away. I was just 19. And so they've had dual roles in my life. They have been a mother and they've been a big sister. But um, mm -hmm. my sister, Sarah, um, she's definitely like the mama. Um, cause she was already married and had a child before I was born. So nice. she's definitely like the mom up there. And, um, uh, the, the, while I was waiting for my procedure, it took a little bit longer. They had some complications, not with me, but with someone else. And so when I saw how long I had been back there and, um, that they had, you know, they hadn't even begun this procedure yet. I said, somebody's got to go out and let my sister know what's going on because she's going to get worried and she's going to be like, well, what's going on? What's taking y'all so long? And um, the doctor laughed and said, she's the older sister, right? And I said, yes. Yeah. She said, yeah, they, them older sisters, they, they become mama bears for real, real quick. And so just grateful, just grateful for family. And I shared about it. Um, I didn't really say anything about it before it happened. I shared about it yesterday. And... I can't tell you the calls that I got and the texts, and it was funny because cousins and different people were calling. They were like, we're not texting, we calling because we need to make sure you're okay. We need to make sure you're all right. And so, and that's what family does. And even today, um, as everybody, well, a lot of people know the Lord has given me to um, share ministry as far as encouragement. And so I do these, for the most part, daily inspirational texts that I send out whatever the Lord gives me. Yes. And um, this morning was, it was Happy Share a Smile or a Hug Sunday. Uh -huh. And the song that he gave me was, I Need You to Survive, that we need each other. And, 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 and no man, the Bible talks about no man is an island. And, and we all need each other. We need each other. Yes, we and do. And sometimes it's something as simple as, smiling at someone or I mean everything is it's not about physical when you think about you know I mean not about physical it's not about financial um but sometimes some, some people just need a hug that's right you just need a hug you just need that smile you just need that little bit of encouragement to say you know what I know you're in the midst of a storm right now but we know the storm, the peacemaker we have relationships with the one who created the storm and he will bring you through the storm and just uh, an encouraged world to say it's going to be alright it's going to be alright and that's what family does that's what friends do and that's how we really need each other we really have to stay connected with one another because it's so important it really really is absolutely. it's so important absolutely. absolutely and there was one that you sent um, maybe that was yesterday or day before in reference to mental health oh yes last night yes and that yes, was very very powerful and yes. um if you yes. can share that if you can you know get that and share that that would be awesome that was truly uh -huh. um something i think that oftentimes we don't think about but i know that i have uh in different conferences i have shared um i'll just do say everybody get their cell phones out and I need you to text three people that you love them, you are there for them, and if they need you, give you a call. Right. Just something very simple. And we're in the hustle and bustle of working um, every day, 
and we have so many different projects and so many things we're working on and even if it's ministry sometimes we're we don't take the time just to breathe right and right. just to think about who can i encourage today exactly and ex exactly because the lord the word again it all goes back to the word it all goes back to the word of god he um, said that he, he said that I'll bless you and make you a blessing. When God blesses us, it's not just for us. Absolutely. It's for us to be a blessing to someone else. And again, it ain't about, you know, like, um, I know you, I'm, I'm sure you probably saw it. What is it? Robert A. Smith, one of the richest men in the world. He spoke at, um, oh God, I'm forgetting which HBCU it was. He was the commencement speaker and doing his message, his, his, his uh, speech today, he announced that he was going to pay off every single graduate debt. They, that every one of them would no longer have any student loans. He was paying off all of their debt. So I got it. But it, I mean, I don't know, you know, a whole, you know, I know a couple of, you know, financially set people, but I don't, I can't say I know, I don't know a Roger, Robert H. Smith personally that could just go around and say, okay, here's $40 billion, go ahead and pay off some debt. So it's not about the finances, but sometimes people just need to know that they have a place to go. And, and I thank the Lord, um, one of the, the Lord gave this to me. He showed it to me a couple of days ago. And sometimes the Lord will show me things, but it's not for that day. But then he, rem he gave it to me again last night, and that's why I didn't send it out. And so last night I sent it when he gave it to me. And what it simply said was, my house is a safe zone. Coffee can be on in minutes. Or if you prefer tea or soda, no problem. I will always be available, even if we haven't talked in a while. Even if you think it's weird, mm -hmm. text me, call me, message me, whatever you need to do, reach out to me. I will be there. I am always a shoulder to cry on and an ear to listen. Nothing is worse than being alone and going through things alone. It's okay not to be okay. And people need to know that they have somebody that I can share what that when I'm not okay. And you're not going to go spread it to everybody. You know, you're not going to post their business on Facebook. Right. You're not going to post their business on Twitter or Instagram. Absolutely. Um, this is one of our pastors and, and our, our apostolic father, Bishop Nelson, always would say all the time, he said, it's things I'm going to go to my grave with. And I know that now just being in ministry, sometimes people have people tell me things. I can't share them. I cannot. Right. Um, something Absolutely. And, you know, and after some things happened, and I said, but I couldn't share that. It wasn't my story to tell. If someone is threatening, in a threatening position, or if they're going to hurt themselves or hurt somebody else, yes, then you've got to take it to the proper people. But if somebody is just expressing a, a situation, they're, they're looking at you, at you as, as to be their confidant. And Absolutely. And the only person you talk to about it is the Lord. That's it. You can't right. take it to nobody else. Right. you got to keep it. And so and everybody needs that person. And a lot of times, and, and I hope no one gets offended about it, a lot of times when people come and they come and talk to us, and Akita, I know you know, it's not so much that they want us to tell them what to do. They need just to get it off their chest. Right, they just need they to listen. Talk about it. They need to release it. It's not, they, we, they don't want us to say, well, do this. No, they just need to release it. And then they just need us to pray for them. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're going to take a quick break and um, our special and featured guests will be with us when we come back. Remember that third Sunday Tea Talk Show is where we educate, advocate, and celebrate. We'll be right back in a moment. Amen.
Welcome back to Third Sunday Tea Talk Show, and I am here with our special featured guest, Mr. Stan Richard, someone I've been talking about for the past month. He is absolutely phenomenal, and not only him, but his wife, Sharice, they have uh, built, I wouldn't say a fortress, because they are so humble. They're such humble, humble, humble people, and they give back so much to the community. But I'm gonna let him introduce himself and share his testimony, talk about his book, and um, the events that he's promoting for the Riches Group Foundation. Welcome to the show. Uh, Dr. Pearson, thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. Yeah, yeah, it's an honor to be here with you. Wonderful, so tell our audience, our listening audience, and our viewing audience about Stan Richards. Well, where do I start? <laughs> I, I'm a, a native Washingtonian. I'm an author of a book called From the Bus to the Bentley, No More oh. Limits, that pretty much talks about my autobiography uh, growing up in the, in the inner city of Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. come from very humble beginnings, uh, six, six kids in a three-bedroom apartment, mm -hmm. no public assistance, no father in a home. Um, I actually graduated from Cadoza High School in 1981, mm -hmm. probably reading on a sixth grade level. And then went on from there and uh, worked briefly in the federal government and then went on to drive a bus in the inner city for 18 years uh, at Metro. Mm -hmm. So I was a bus driver for 18 years. And then uh, by age 44, I decided that, you know, I wanted to take my life in my own hands and start to really uh, follow my dreams. So basically what happened was my brother got sick with, uh, with pancreatic cancer mm. and it changed my life um, because I started looking at the way I was living. Uh, I had um, a nice job, a great job, making six figures. Mm -hmm. I'm married to a beautiful uh, young lady, Sharice Richards, mm -hmm. who worked in the federal government. It was a GS-14. We had two beautiful, got two beautiful sons, nice home, nice car. But um, I looked up and I, and I had no time. Mm. And I tell people all the time, Dr. Pearson, um, I was, to be honest with you, I was broke on a higher level. Because you know, you go out and buy all this stuff because you oh, equate okay. that to success. Mm -hmm. And I had more bills than money, mm -hmm. right? And so um, when my brother got sick, I started taking a look at my life and I said, you know what? You know, time with my family means more than money. Mm -hmm. So I decided to embark on entrepreneurship and became very successful in that. And um, now Sharice and I own several businesses and uh, we started the Richards Group Foundation in 2011 when I launched my book from a bus to the Bentley. Uh -huh. And here we are, um, like eight years later, the book is launched. Uh, we started a nonprofit, actually in honor of my mom, who was a prayer warrior in the hood. All so right. she, she had all her kids, <laughs> and she had everybody else's kids in her house. Wow. And uh, she, would, she was just a praying woman. Mm. And uh, back there in the 60s, I talk about this in my book, that, uh, you know, Imagine raising six kids and uh, you know on your own, you know, with no father. And um, so we all came. Uh, we were very successful, you know, coming out the hoods of D.C. And so um, I wanted to to give back, mm -hmm. you know, to um, my community. Mm -hmm. For me, God has blessed me beyond beyond. I graduated, couldn't read. I was on drugs from '83 to '87. Mm -hmm. Healed from addiction by God's grace and favor. Praise God. Amen. And then went on and drove a bus and uh, uh, was actually institutionalized on my job. Mm. Embarked on entrepreneurship and realized all the gifts and uh, talents that God had given me mm. and started to reach for those gifts and talents. It became very successful. So we started the foundation because uh, we want to go back into the inner city and teach our kids to see beyond their circumstances, mm -hmm. you know, where you are now is not the end result. You Absolutely. can be, do, and have more. So I'm excited about that. So we go Wonderful. back and pull back to the kids in the inner city. Excellent. Now, yeah. I remember you sharing a story about this young lady. Um, and she was getting ready to graduate. Tell the listening audience about that story. From Which this, one this, this young lady, she um, needed assistance. And she didn't have, like, parents. And I think she came from, like, a foster um situation but whatever you all just took under her wings got her into college oh yeah Ab absolutely I mean we've done that so many times and I'm so it's just from not a, one yeah, person yeah because um, 
You know, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, our model is we learn, we earn, and we return. Mm. And so this young lady particularly, she was a senior at Cadoza High School, and she was struggling and everything like that mm -hmm. and, and, and didn't know how she was going to get to college and get in, in, into college. So we started a scholarship fund, and we started to help her, and we both poured back into her. Now she's a graduate. She, she graduated from college, I think, two years ago, and she's doing well out in society. Praise God. Yeah, so that's what it's all about, you know, to really, I think it's our responsibility to go back and to give back to our community, mm -hmm. and I don't think we do that enough, mm -hmm. especially when God has blessed us to to uh, be successful in life and, mm -hmm. and to, and to um, prosper. It's our duty to go back, because nobody's going to pour back into our community Absolutely. but us. That's, that's right? correct. That's correct. So yeah. how, how do you encourage individuals to do that? Because oftentimes, like you mentioned before um, not living beneath your not living within your means and a lot of times people they're not living be, uh, within their means but how can how would you encourage someone in that particular position and even those who are not how they can give back and they may not um, have a vision or it may not be their calling to do a richest group foundation but yeah. they can give back yeah absolutely well first of all I, I I need to be the light so me mm -hmm. and my wife we are the light so you know I start by doing myself mm -hmm. and being a light and then from there just encouraging people that you you may not need to you don't need to start a nonprofit right. you imagine if every one of us spent one hour back in our old neighborhood or our high school Mm -hmm. What would our community look like? One hour a month. Yes. You know what I mean? Because here's what I found to be true. A lot of the kids that, that I that I pour back into, like me, all they want to know is is it possible? Mm -hmm. You know? A lot of uh, I mean a lot of them can't see beyond their circumstances. Absolutely. So they need a Stan or Dr. Pearson that can come back and say, Hey, look, you can do this. I graduated, couldn't read, I was on drugs, but all you have to do is want it and be willing to put the work in and, and, and take full responsibility for your life. Absolutely, absolutely so. We're here with Mr. Stan Richards. Um, he is the founder, he and his wife, Sharice Richards, of the Richards uh, Group Foundation. Yes. And tell us a little bit about the foundation. And um, you said um, it was started out of a need to give back yes. and, and your desire and compassion to give back. But share how over the years, some of the things that you, you all have done, and I know your wife has done um, special yeah. programming yeah. for young ladies. So yeah. if you could share a little bit more about um, that nonprofit and what yeah. you guys have been doing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, first of all, you know, I equated success to money, cars, and stuff. Mm -hmm. So once, you know, I was blessed with, you know, to drive Bentleys and really live a, a, a nice lifestyle, mm -hmm. at the end of the uh, day, the only thing that matters is what you give back. Mm -hmm. And so God laid on my heart, you know, in my wife's heart to start the foundation and to go back starting in my own community. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in a community that's called Brooklyn Manor. It used to be called Brentwood, right in Northeast, right mm -hmm. off of Rhode Island Avenue. And I'm going to tell you something, uh, Dr. Pearson, every time I go back there to pour back into the kids, um, I feel so gratified. Mm. It's better than, than driving a Bentley. It's better than going to Paris mm -hmm. when I'm back in my own community. Yes. You know what I mean? So we, we started a, 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 a program called Project 1335. That's my old building number. Okay. I lived at 1335. Apartment six. So we started 1330, uh, Project 1335, where we go back and we teach uh, um, entrepreneurship to the kids in the hood. We teach them how money works. We mm -hmm. teach them about setting goals, about taking full responsibility of your life, self-image, all these things that they're not going to get mm -hmm. in school. So, and then Cherie started a program uh, at her old high school, Central High School, called Girls Who Win a couple of years ago. Okay. And now she has a program called the 21st Century Woman. The 21st Century yes. Woman, that's it. Yes, so she, we are, we're always looking to pour back into a lot of the at-risk youth in, the, um, in, in our community because we get it now, and it's mm -hmm. so more gratifying than, you know, all of the money and the stuff. Right. So I know one of your, your driving forces is entrepreneurship. And I can remember I'm from um, a farm in mm -hmm. South Carolina, from a community, not even a town. 
and um, and I'm grateful for my humble beginnings. My dad still yeah. farms, yeah. Um, and we learned everything on the farm. You know uh, when to plant, uh, when to harvest, even with the animals and taking them to market, and how to save money. I remember um, we work on the farms, we work in the fields, we crop tobacco, we did all these different things, and um, and we were taught to save. And we were taught how to balance our checkbooks yes. and put money um, in the bank um, at very young ages and how to um, sell and how to make your profit off of your watermelons, off of your squash. Um, and those kind, that entrepreneurship mindset was established in us from a very, very young age. Um, however, one of the things I think was missing in schools is um, stock market and some of the other entrepreneurship yeah. areas that we don't get. So I applaud you for going back into the communities and doing that um, because some children, they don't get out of high school learning those particular skills. Yeah. And um, it should come natural right. to um, how do you, because of survival technique, yeah. And how do you survive? How do you do all the different things that you do? Yeah. Um, I, I strongly believe in the Lord and that the Lord can have our minds to conceive all kinds of things. Yeah. Um, and it's not that, you know, you have to be a rocket scientist to figure these things out and run multiple businesses, yeah. but it's the thing of pouring back. Why was entrepreneurship so important to you? Well, because um, at age 44, I get it. I always say that people only change two ways by an emotional impact, which mm -hmm. when my brother got sick, uh, I realized I had to do something else because I was stuck on this job, mm -hmm. okay? And then through repetition, doing something over, over. And I knew I had these gifts inside of me, but I was, I lived in fear, I lived in bondage mm -hmm. of, you know, because I, you know, my dark secrets were, you know, I graduated, couldn't read, I wasn't smart enough, mm -hmm. I wasn't good enough. And, you know, I used to be on drugs and, and, and so, I just lived in fear for so many years, but that that emotional impact catapulted me out of that mm -hmm. situation, and then I started to realize who I am and whose I am, that I can do anything that I want to do, that I got gifts and talents inside that, that all I need to do is tap in and follow, mm -hmm. right? So that's what I, I teach the kids to do today because even, but uh, let me just share this with you. Even though I, I had that, I had to always position myself around people who would add value to my life. Mm -hmm. Other entrepreneurs like Les Brown, Dr. George C. Frazier, mm -hmm. Bob Proctor, Tony Robbins, these are all these guys that mentored me over the years. Mm -hmm. So you just don't go from the bus to the Bentley. Absolutely. You know, you got to get in community with people who can pour into you and add value to your life, and then you have to be open to receive. Now let me share this really quickly about money. Once I started to make money, I remember making my first million dollars, I spent 1.2 mm -hmm. million. So I was still broke mm -hmm. because nobody never taught me about money. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important that we understand money and how money works because mm -hmm. here again, you know, I see so many people out here driving Mercedes Benz, BMWs, wearing Gucci's and Gucci mm -hmm. bags, okay, and they have no money in the bank. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to invest their money, mm -hmm. right? They don't even have a life insurance policy. Mm -hmm. They can't even afford absolutely to die. Right. They can't yeah, afford to right. die. You know what I mean? That's one of my entrepreneurships. Yeah. I am a licensed insurance agent. Psh, that's, that's awesome. That's one of my entrepreneurship. And that's how you build yeah. wealth. You Absolutely. know that. Absolutely. And residual income. Residual income. <laughs> See, most of us have residual <laughs> bills and linear income. That's right. So we need to have some residual income yes. in our portfolio. So that's, that's right. awesome. And Sharice is a licensed uh, 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 a life insurance agent as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you know we, you know we, one of our mentors taught us like, okay, Stan, you know you need to start, uh, uh, putting your money in life insurance policies that's and right. for that's a whole nother program another that we program. can talk about at a later date. <laughs> but let me tell you, it has blessed my life. Yes, it tremendously. Has. And it yeah. continues to bless my life every yeah. month. Yeah. Yeah. I've been Absolutely. doing it for 26 years. Really? <laughs> I started at 18. Wow. So it's it, but it's very important um, yeah. that we um, have an opportunity to impart into yeah. children yeah. Um, and into adults. It's for me, adults seems to be more they seem to be a little more um, resistant and not yeah. open for whatever reasons. 
um, to sacrifice because it's a sacrifice yeah. um, to learn and to invest and to uh, look at things from a different perspective versus just working a job and getting um, a paycheck, which is great, yeah. you know, because yeah. you you know you know you're going to get paid on the first and fifteenth or whatever, but then you know that's the only amount. How can you maximize and yeah. use that? Um, as your standard, but then what about the gravy stuff, you know, mm -hmm. that, 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 you know, could just come and you don't even have to worry about right. it, you know? Right. Um, but to do that with children is so very important because oftentimes they're not taught in schools and if their parents don't have that skill set, yeah. then they don't get it. Yeah. yeah. They don't get it until they're way older and sometimes um, I believe excellence is the standard. And yeah. we can do things right the very first time if we have the proper tools. That's right. We don't have to make the same mistakes right. as someone else, uh, someone else has made. Mm -hmm. We can avoid some of those yeah. by, you know, having an open heart and an open mind. Mm -hmm. But there is one significant thing that you talked about is your mom and her prayers. Yeah. And you know, I just strongly believe that prayer still works. Amen. <laughs> Where will we be, right? <laughs> I mean, it, it don't, when I look back on my life, it really don't add up. And, and my mother was a, a prayer warrior. And now I pray every day for my, my, my two sons because the time that they're living in, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, the status quo and following the crowd and things like that, you know, it, it takes a lot of prayer. And Absolutely. I do believe that I would not be the man that I am, am today if it wasn't for me having a praying mama. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I know there are some events that are coming up yes. in your organization, yes. so let's tell our listening audience about some of the wonderful things that you all are doing yes. in this season. Yes. Well, uh, uh, June 8th, we are doing the, uh, the Richards Group Foundation. We're sponsoring the Race uh, uh, for Prostate Cancer Awareness. Uh, real quickly, my story, three years ago, I was at the top of my game traveling mm -hmm. and doing really well. in. I went in for a routine physical and realized I had prostate cancer, mm -hmm. right? And it's rampant in the African American community. And uh, by God's grace, I've been healed from prostate cancer. Praise God. So when, when, when I have a traumatic experience, I always ask, okay, God, what do I need to learn mm -hmm. from this? And he said two things. I want you to watch your mouth, mm -hmm. be more conscious of what you're eating, mm -hmm. right, and your diet. But then I also want you to go out and share your story. Mm -hmm. So I share my story with the world because you, you'd be surprised, uh, Dr. Pearson, that most men don't get an annual physical. Wow. So many men are out here don't get an annual physical. And thank God that I did because I caught it early and I was able mm -hmm. to catch it. So we're going to have on June 8th, we're going to do... It's going to be a really nice event. It's going to be a family event. The whole family right. can come out, the kids. We're going to have music. We're going to have games. We're going to be, it's going to be really nice. And we're going to have uh, 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 people, you know, spokespersons out there speaking on prostate cancer and prostate cancer awareness. And we're also going to be doing uh, uh, testing, PSA testing as well. Absolutely. So it's going to be at Bowie Town Center, and they can go to the website to get more information, which is the Richards Group Foundation.org. All right, you all heard the richest group foundation.org. I am going to be there yes. helping you out. I appreciate getting you. Getting people there yes. at this particular 5K walk yeah. run yeah. for prostate cancer health. We need our yeah. men. Yeah. And yeah. one of the things that are um, shortening the lifespan of our men and taking them out is them not getting tested. Yeah. And uh, that PSA test that they're going to have yeah. there at um, the 5K walk. It's just a stick, I believe yeah. it is. And it's free. And it's free. Yeah. And it's free. And those yeah. tests run up upwards of about two hundred dollars. Yeah, absolutely. So you have an opportunity to come out, have a lot of fun, yeah. get your little prick, yeah. um, know your numbers. Yeah. And if there's an issue, you can knock it out. But you know, you know, right you know another thing that's so important. We have to instill in our kids to get out to bed and exercise. Mm -hmm. So. Sharice and I, we've been exercising together for many years. We, you know, we have a brand loving business. Okay. And, and, and so we ran three marathons uh, and we've been exercising together. And our, our sons both watched us exercise all the time. So what I want to see, what we need to see in our community more is families getting up out the bed and go for a walk. I know that's Instead right. of sleeping until 11, 12 o'clock, you know, on a Saturday morning. Guys, 
get up and come out and let's have a great time. You'll be done in an hour and you have your whole day to, uh, to, uh, right. to yourself and you're going to feel great. Absolutely. Yeah. So what time? Well, it starts at 8 o'clock. Okay. And I know that's early for a lot of people. Registration actually starts at 7, uh -huh. but we're going to kick off at 8. And uh, we're going we're gonna to do the, the runners will go first and we have the walkers. And then after that, we're going to make have some announcement and, and talk about, you know, prostate cancer mm -hmm. and different things like that. We're going to have vendors there that, that's talking about exercise and how to eat clean and all that kind of and stuff. And that is extremely important. Yeah, for sure. That's extremely important yeah. because what you put in, yeah. it, you know. You are what you eat. You are what you eat. Yeah. That's a good yeah. way to put it. You yeah. are what you eat. And it's very important for us to be in tune to our bodies. Our yeah. bodies talk to us. Yeah. Um, our bodies even heal themselves if yeah. you're doing, you know, the right things. Yeah. And it's very important to exercise. Yeah, absolutely. That is some really good stuff. Yeah. Um, I have been doing 10 miles a day for many years, and I slacked up a little bit. So where you at now? Nine the, miles a day? No, 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 no. no. I'll, I'll do three in the morning. What I do is break it up five in the morning because I get up at 4.30 for devotions. So you, okay. So and tell so me that. Tell me, tell me. Work, I'll, I'll do five, and then in the evenings I'll do another five. Five miles? Five miles. Wow. Oh, my God. I it am slacking. About, it only takes about an hour to do it. So what time do you hit the, the pavement? The, the about six. Wow. That is so awesome. Yeah. Just break it up. And, and once five in the work, evening? Yeah. So you got before you go to work and when you come home. That is so awesome. It is such a wonderful experience. Yeah. And then it's when so it's therapeutic cold, too. I have to go, you know, inside. Yeah. But I like to be out that is in so the community. Awesome. Um, walking and where I live in Columbia everybody just walk they yeah. walk they run they bicycle yeah. it's a, yeah. just a lot of that and it's just that kind of atmosphere um, so how many days a week important. you do it I try to do at least four to five days per week that is so amazing mm -hmm. Wow and I have some friends that um, walk sometimes um, with me but most of them can't do the five mm -hmm. so yeah. I've cut back and I'll do three of someone else yeah. is walking with me but um, once you get in the habit of doing it by the time by the time you start, oh, yeah. and I have my earphones on, praising the Lord, and I mean, it's just over like so quick. Yeah, and yeah. it's so therapeutic to be out, oh, absolutely. and it relieves the stress. That, 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 you know, people are getting prostate cancer and breast cancer because of the stress. Yeah. You know, the everyday stress of life, we're living in such a complex time in these times, and you need prayer, and you need to exercise absolutely. because to relieve that stress absolutely. and release. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so it puts awesome. you in a really, good really state. good place. Yeah. And also, the other thing is fasting. Yeah. I believe that we need to detox. Yeah. Um, and I've been detoxing for many, many years. And um, at the beginning of the year, I'll do 40, 30 to 40 day fast. Every month, I'll do seven days. And the, it's, it's a cleansing. Oh, yeah. You know, so it's, it's very good that yeah. you cleanse, you know, your body. Even if yeah. you're eating healthy, it's still good, too. To, to do a cleanse every now and then. Yeah. So when you fast, I mean, you don't eat anything, just liquid? Liquids, and um, after six, I'll do soup or salad. Okay. Um, and sometimes I'll just do liquids uh, because salad, you know, um, I don't care for salad too much, but then it gives you gastritis kind of things okay. going on, you know. Okay. So when you eat too much salad, you get a little gassy. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just the real. I mean, a lot of salad, a lot of green yeah. stuff. It yeah. kind of blows you a little bit. Yeah. Um, so sometimes I just do liquids. Yeah. And it's not awesome. liquid. It's not coffee. It's not sodas. I do not drink any sodas. I don't right. allow sodas in my house. Wow. I that's think awesome. sodas is the devil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is, really. Yeah. So I drink a lot of water and I do pomegranate juice, the, nice. palm, the palm juice. Yeah. Nice. Which is also an antioxidant. Um, okay. But, but being healthy, yeah. um, feeling healthy, feeling yeah. great. Because when you are, when the Lord has blessed you with so much, and you have so you have businesses, you have ministry, and you need your strength to keep going and yeah. to be able to function and do all the things that you know He has allowed you to do. So yeah. you, I mean, you can't have all that food and all yeah. that stuff just weighing you down. Yeah. Two things I'll share real quick. No, number one is um, you can't help anybody if you're sick. Think Absolutely. about that. That's right. If you're hurting in your body, you can't. You can't help anybody. That's right. But then number two, what the enemy is doing these days is he is using food to get us. It's Absolutely. not the alcohol. I mean, it's not the, the drugs and, and, and alcohol. It's the, and the guns. It's the food. Absolutely. So we got to get a hold of that. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Well, I want you to share once more. We're here with uh, Mr. Stan Richards of the Richards Group. They have a phenomenal, a phenomenal 5K walk that is coming yes. up on Saturday, June 8th. 8th, yes. Saturday, June 8th. And, and that's, men's, be that's Men's Health Month. It's going to be at Bowie Town Center. It's a nice, it's a nice walk. A nice run. It's the, everything is even. The pavement, the, the course, it's going to be really run, nice. Uh, Bowie Town Center. Mm -hmm. Bowie Town Center. Registration is at 7 o'clock. That's Saturday, June 8th, yes. Men's Health Month. Yes, yes. June 8th. Um, registration starts at 7. The walk start. well, the runners start at 8. Yep, and then the uh, walkers will follow the runners. And the walkers will yeah. follow the yeah. runners. Yeah. I will be there. I look yeah. forward to seeing you all yeah. there as well. So we thank you for joining us. Thanks for having um, me. On Third Sunday yeah. Tea Talk yeah. Show. If you have some final words, share some final words of encouragement, um, if you'd like, before we end the show. Well, guys, listen, live your best life. You know, my motto is no more limits. Guys, we can do anything because we serve an awesome and amazing God. So live your best life today, right now. That's my words. All right. Yeah. Well, we thank you so very much no limits there is no limits right. we thank you for joining us today on third sunday tea talk show we look forward to seeing you back here again next month third sunday where we educate advocate and we celebrate <laughs>